main opponents were Pope Urban's two nephews, the Barberini Cardinals, who were solidly in the French camp. Cardinal Mazarin, the Prime Minister of France, was opposed to the election of Cardinal Pompili. In addition, the Barberinis had siphoned off some $80 million from the church treasury to build palaces <clears throat> for themselves, and they were afraid of being brought to trial. Seeing this impasse, Olympia smuggled in an offer to the Barberinis. She would marry her 22-year-old son Camillo to their 14-year-old niece Lucrezia, thereby <laughs> uniting the two families, which would preclude any papal prosecution, because you know, in Italy, certainly back then, in-laws were just like your blood family. Uh, and he would never prosecute them. And also, by marrying Camillo off, Olympia would prevent him from taking the position of cardinal nephew. The Pope almost always appointed a nephew, whether he was a murdering soldier or a womanizer, or in Camillo's case, he just was not right, but he'd be a, a cardinal working closely with his elderly uncle. And then the Barberines could keep their positions. So meanwhile, <coughs> by the time this happened, the cardinals had been in conclave for five weeks. Malaria had struck, as always, and several cardinals had been removed on stretchers, feverish, vomiting, or semi-conscious, and one of them had died. At this point, according to one contemporary chronicler, the cardinals would have elected the devil himself just to get out of there alive. Uh, when the Barberini cardinals withdrew their veto of John Battista Pamphili, at sunrise on September 15th, he was elected pope. Now, Olympia had already received word at 3 a.m. when John Battista sent a messenger to the Piazza Navona house. She and her son were standing there in their nightclub clothes holding candles, and they started jumping up and down with joy. For generosity to one's family was a Christian virtue, and every pope made his relatives princes and princesses and gave them heaping helpings of the Vatican treasury. Olympia had just won the papal lottery, <coughs> the fruit of 32 years hard work. Now, and here's another really strange tradition to us today. When the cardinal came on to the loggia of St. Peter's to announce the new pope, the, the crowds in St. Peter's Square would race to that cardinal's palace and sack it thoroughly. Um, sometimes not just the furniture, but the rain spouts, the roof tiles, the, the doors. And when the crowd heard that the new pope was Innocenzo, which is Italian for innocent, they thought that um, it was Cardinal Crescenzo. And so they all went to this poor cardinal's palace and they just tore it to pieces. <laughs> Then they heard it was Cardinal Pomphili, so they raced to Olympia's house. And Olympia herself smilingly opened the giant courtyard doors to let in the mob. She could afford to smile because she had hidden all her valuable furniture, and she had replaced it with cheap broken tables and chairs that she had bought at the local flea market. <laughs> On their way out, the people said, the horror has cheated us. One chronicler reported from that time on, they esteemed her extremely greedy. This is Olympia's handsome but feckless son Camillo, and he was a caricature of a weak son dominated by a bossy mother. He refused to honor her promise to be to the Barberinis to marry Lucrezia. He found her terribly unattractive, and he insisted on becoming a cardinal nephew. But doing any kind of work seemed to be beyond Camillo. The Vatican halls echoed with the Pope yelling at him for being a lazy bum. When ambassadors called on him to discuss urgent international affairs, they were insulted when Camillo began doodling designs for gardens on his notepad, not listening to them at all. So the Pope gave Camillo the project of building a papal naval galley, but when it was launched with the whole Vatican court in attendance, it began to sink. When his mother eagerly offered to help him with his work, he spurned her. And after two miserable years as cardinal nephew, uh, Camilla fell in love with a scintillating rich young widow, Olympia Aldobrandini, the princess of Rosano, and he decided he didn't want to be a cardinal anymore. What he wanted was to get married. Um, until 1917, cardinals did not have to become ordained as priests, which is thought um, in Catholic theology to, to tattoo your soul with a kind of mark, uh, which prevents marriage. Uh, being a cardinal is actually a dignity. It's kind of like 